Hey, welcome back. So, I was going to talk about... I finished the Hamilton... I mean, the Federalist Papers. Finally. Um, and I got kind of excited going through Audible because there are a lot of free books that I didn't realize that I could listen to. Um, so what am I going to listen to next? Hold on a second. Well, one of them was... Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. So in my library, I can listen to Robinson Crusoe, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Sherlock Holmes. I downloaded The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. It was stupid. Um, Moby Dick, Tom Sawyer, The Art of War, Wuthering Heights, The Souls of Black Folk. Um, those are all the ones I want to Anything else? No. Um, those are all the free ones I have now that I can listen to, which is cool. I'm gonna listen to all of them, but it, uh, maybe I'll do Jekyll and Hyde first, because that one's pretty short. It's only three hours. Um, <clears throat> but, so, okay, there had one last note about the Federalist Papers, which I thought was interesting, and it was actually, I was actually, um, on the way to the date, I was practicing this, because I was like, okay, this is something I could talk about that's like, I read books and I'm interesting. Because I felt like the topic of audiobooks would come up, and then she'd be like, well, what, what are you reading right now? And I'd be like, oh, I did just finish The Federalist Papers. Can I talk about that? Um, should I talk about Anna Karenina or, um, or In Peace? I'm like, okay, well, I, I just finished. I can make kind of a comment like, oh, I just did the Federalist Papers, but, like, I know it's not super interesting, but I, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> and, like, there was one thing that I just read which I thought was interesting, and I could talk about that a little bit, um, which was... So I was practicing this on the way to the date. I never got to say it, but... <laughs> Um, I'm just thinking about, like, I feel like it was bad that I didn't practice. I did feel pretty comfortable on the date, and I could have tried to be more open, but I kind of let myself off the hook like an hour or two into it because I felt like, oh, this isn't really gonna be a connection so I'm just not gonna push myself to to get vulnerable and we did just kind of talk about family and the weather or whatever um and I should have tried to push myself to be more vulnerable as practice even though I knew like this wouldn't be a match but I was like oh it's not gonna be a match you don't have to that's the kind of dumb that was kind of dumb but whatever um, Hamilton, uh, let's talk about what I thought was interesting, which was Hamilton did not want the Bill of Rights. Did you know this? Did you know this? Oh, and I just bought a constitution. I never had one before. I never read the constitution before. It's pretty small. But, um, he thought the constitution was enough and that explicitly, as Perfectly. <laughs> explicitly stating certain rights was dangerous he thought that um, I think I probably heard this before but if you explicitly state rights in the constitution then you're setting up the argument ooh, that rights that aren't in the constitution are not rights um, which I think, oh, he got me again. <laughs> um, to explicitly state <coughs> freedom of the press was unnecessary because the Constitution did not say that the press could be controlled, therefore it can't be, blah, 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 what? For why declare things, okay, this is, I just copied some stuff verbatim. For why declare that things shall not be done which there is no power to do that's what hamilton said <coughs> another delegate 
James Wilson of Pennsylvania later argued that the act of enumerating the rights of the people would have been dangerous because it would imply that rights not explicitly mentioned did not exist. Hamilton echoed this point in Federalist 84. The Anti-Federalists got the Bill of Rights added. Jefferson wrote to Madison advocating for the Bill of Rights. Half a loaf is better than no bread at all. If we cannot sur secure all our rights, let us secure what we can. Um, it puts... It's an interesting thing. And I put a little bit of a joke. <coughs> a little bit of a joke. Um, okay, this guy's gonna kill me again. Yep, there he is. Oh. Like, at, at what point do you cut it off and be like, well, there are a lot of rights. Like, you have the right to breathe. Should we put that? Um, you have the right to eat a meal in peace. Damn it, Margaret, that's the joke. <laughs> Do I have the right to eat a goddamn meal in peace, Margaret? Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's a joke there somewhere. Um, like Thomas Jefferson is writing the Bill of Rights and he's like mad at his wife one day. And he's, I don't know. You're funny there. You're funnier than me. Think of something. There's something there. Anyway, <laughs> um, there were, did you know this? Did you know this? There were 12 original amendments in the Bill of Rights. Um, but two of them were never ratified, the first two. So that's why the Bill of Rights only had 10 amendments. Um, and the first one had to do with the apportionment of the House of Representatives. And um, I don't really know why it wasn't ratified, but they eventually just passed a law that was like to figure out how many people would be in the House of Rep Representatives. But the first amendment said that it will be a portion in a specific way, like 50,000 people per representative. And if we were to ratify that amendment today, it would mean that there would be 6,000 members in the House of Representatives, which is kind of interesting. Um, and there's a whole argument for that, like maybe there should be 6,000 representatives. Maybe 400 is not enough. Maybe we're not properly representing the country. Well, there's a point to be made there, for surely. Um, for surely, um, for truly. And the second amendment was ratified in like <laughs> 1992 which was interesting because like some kid was like hey wait a minute and he wrote a senator like this thing was never ratified and then they ratified it because it had it had something to do with like senators pay or something i don't remember something stupid that nobody cared about and they're just like oh yeah let's ratify it that's what they did it so Never expect a perfect plan from imperfect man. Hamilton said that. Because people were arguing, like, if if we admit that the Constitution isn't perfect, why would we ratify it? And Hamilton, I think, is right by saying, like, well, come on, it's never going to be perfect. we got to do something. If you just keep, we're just going to keep arguing forever if we're waiting for it to be perfect. Um, and he's like, we just got to trust the people in the future will fix it. You shouldn't have done that. You can't trust us with anything. We're not going to fix it. Um, 
So how do we feel about that idea that rights not enumerated in the Constitution are... I don't know. Have we heard that argument? I feel like I've heard that argument from, like, senators being like, well, it's not in the Constitution, so it's not a right. And Hamilton's like... Huh. Well, it's different. The Supreme Court is supposed to, like, see if... Um, laws are constitutional, right? That's their whole job. So... How else would they judge a law if not by the Constitution? <sighs> I mean, I'm out of my depth here, like, as always, but... I think, I think in a perfect world, we would just... It, we we would just be able to enumerate all the rights and whenever we think of one we just write it down the right to throw a baseball in the air okay write it down the right to eat a brownie on a sunday okay write it down um But Hamilton's saying like, well, of course you can eat a brownie on a Sunday. We don't have to put that in there. And if we put it in there, then we're then all the other things that we don't put in here. If we're being so specific about the brownies, then obviously if it's not in here, then it's not a right. And so if you do something that's not in the Constitution, you're doing something unconstitutional. Um, and Hamilton did not want that to be the case of the situation. <laughs> I need ammo. <coughs> I need ammo. It's <clears throat> gonna get a mother shotgun. I'm just gonna get a mother shotgun. Whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um... So, am I making any sense to anybody? Yep, 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 yep. Um, the Bill of Rights is kind of like a half measure, though. So, that does put us in a weird position of, like, they are enumerating some rights. So, these rights are... This is what, I guess, Jefferson's kind of saying is, like, well, can't we have it both ways? Can't we make sure we enumerate some rights and then also say that if it's not in here you can't assume that it's not a right just because we forgot to put it in the constitution um i guess i don't know it does feel a little bit like a half measure though to just be like, oh, we're just going to list 10 rights. The right to not quarter soldiers. Like, who cares about the quartering soldiers? Free speech. Okay, free speech is a good right. That's a good one. We like that one. Um, bear arms. Okay, maybe not so much. Yeah, Hamilton was right. If we didn't have the stupid Second Amendment. Um, there would be a lot more kids alive today who died from guns that's depressing but we know it's a misinterpretation of the second amendment to say like everybody should have guns right we know that um it's the right it's the right it's the right it's the right Hmm. It's interesting now to have that perspective because when I did the Second Amendment video, um, I didn't have that perspective. So I thought that Hamilton and Madison liked the Bill of Rights and they just added it after because it's like, oh, we forgot to put it in the Constitution or whatever. 
but they thought that everything in the Constitution was good enough. And in the Constitution, it doesn't say anything about the well-regulated militia, right? I mean, I don't, I don't have, well, I have the Constitution right there, but I haven't read it yet. It's not very long. Um, so it's interesting because Hamilton argues and Madison in the Federalist Papers that having a well-regulated militia is good, but it's not in the Constitution. It's in the Bill of Rights. So that's kind of weird, right? Um, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe tomorrow I'll read the Constitution for you. And we'll see. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. If you wanna come at me, then come at me. If you wanna come at me, then come at me. Ooh. But no, but no. Ugh. Well. Okay, um, we're in a bad situation because... I only have the shotgun. <laughs> Oops. Okay, uh, see you tomorrow. Go. Sorry. Am I doing okay this week? I mean, I gotta finish this level, which is ridiculously long. <laughs> I must be at the end sometime today. But, uh... See you tomorrow. Bye.